G'day, it's Clint here and today I want to talk about protein powders and whether or not they're a good idea if you've got rheumatoid arthritis. And this is a very passionate topic of mine because when I was going through a lot of my early healing days and I was on a raw food diet, I lost a lot of weight. And so during that period, I was very passionately seeking ways of gaining weight and uh, I want to talk about protein powders today from a great deal of experience and also from the scientific research. So let's first of all start with some of the concerns associated with taking protein powders because in general I find that they do more harm than good but let's go into why so that you understand and feel confident about protein powders and whether or not they're something for you to try in the future or something to avoid so first of all let's uh, come over here to my little whiteboard I've put this together and I just want a big shout out to Linda here because she's a Patterson program client who has asked me this question about the protein powders and I want to thank her for uh, uh, motivating me to put this together so let's look at um, this first bullet point here. Um, we've got to remember um, from my acronym BLAME, which is bacteria, leaky gut, acidosis, uh, gastric acid in the stomach, mucosal lining and enzymes. This is the cause of rheumatoid arthritis, okay? Now, within that, um, excess protein adds acidity to the body. So why would we want to add excess protein? All protein, plant-based or otherwise, is all acidifying for the body. The opposite, almost powerful uh, antibody to excess protein is potassium. Um, but assuming we're not you know, supplementing potassium or we're not having a very high potassium diet, which I do recommend, by the way, um, then this protein is going to add acid to the body. So having excess protein through supplementation is definitely going to add inflammation to our body. Secondly, we've got to remember, um, when we think about, um, you know, we're talking about leaky gut here, when we think about what's going on with RA, is that these, these undigested proteins are entering the bloodstream, and when they enter the bloodstream, they are then seen as an antigen by the body, and an antibody is created, and then this anti, these antibodies can then uh, start to see the joint lining as an enemy and also um, therefore begin a self-attack on the body. And so that's the last thing we want, is to be adding more proteins that can become undigested and end up in the bloodstream. And so I question from a fundamental point of view whether or not you want to be adding all this extra protein for the body to not only break down, but also add acidity to the body and then add more potential antigens into the bloodstream, which aggravates more rheumatoid arthritis. So, um, and just for completeness, I've also added here, remember that excess protein's an enemy uh, uh, dietary fat causes more inflammation and simple sugars. There are your main problems. I've just added these extra couple here just for the education process to be more complete rather than just single out the protein here. Um, incidentally, um, you know, those people who are on a crazy diet like a paleo diet might find, uh, you know, this a nice reminder here and, and a, just a little, you know, kick up the butt, so, butt here. I mean, if you're on an animal if you've got animal products in your diet which are very high in protein and they're very high in fat even lean chickens 30 percent fat because the fats in the muscle cells you just can't heal on a paleo diet i mean you can improve because you lose the oils you lose the dairy for a lot of people but you just can't heal to the point that i'm talking about and what i want for my clients and what i've achieved, achieved for myself let's review now um, how much protein we actually need 1942, a researcher, Dr. William Rose, showed that we only need 20 grams a day based on the minimum, sorry, the, the maximum demand on a person based on the amino acid requirement for, for an individual, for a man, right? And they just double it just for fun. I'll say, well, let's not, let's not take any risks here. Let's double it. So 37 grams a day is the World Health Organization requirement for protein okay that, that's like one scoop of a protein powder as if you weren't getting any protein from any other sources yet there is protein in so many basically if you're eating your daily calorie requirement your daily energy requirements so that you're meeting your needs then you are getting enough protein it's impossible not to get enough protein each day if you eat a divide a diverse range of foods and you meet your daily calorie requirement so it's that simple, whether or not you have animals in your, in your diet and you're you know, uh, eating those bad foods or whether or not you are avoiding those foods for good health, you are going to meet your daily requirement. In fact, as I jump down one here, just if you only ate rice all day, you would get 71 grams of protein. If you only ate potatoes all day, 
you'd get 64 grams of protein. And so, and I'll come back to this in a second, the issue is not actually a protein issue here if you're underweight or you're trying to build strength. It's a calorie issue. So what, what we find is that people who are underweight or they're trying to build strength, they're just not eating enough food. They've discovered or they've realized or they've intuitively found that the food causes pain. So people don't eat enough food. Particularly when you shift onto a plant-based diet, you need to eat more food. It needs to be more uh, uh, physical uh, sizes of the, of the food or eat more often because the calorie density is lower than a high-fat um, meat, dairy kind of diet. Okay, the other thing is when people feel that they want to gain weight or build more muscle, they're just not exercising enough. Muscles will not grow without being used. The body only has enough muscle on it to sustain the requirements that you uh, put upon it every day. Because the body doesn't want to nurture and provide fuel and nutrients and blood flow to additional muscle mass on the body if you don't use it. The body's too efficient for that. It wants to preserve energy and preserve its, its resources. So if you um, aren't asking a muscle to grow, it won't grow. And the best way if you just want to gain weight is just to um, engage muscles that you want to grow. It sounds simple, but people don't do it. And so one of the best body parts to grow are your glute muscles, which is basically your backside muscles, your hamstrings and your quadriceps. These parts of the body are the largest muscle group. And if you engage those through some simple standing squats or some walking, um, sorry, some standing lunges or some walking lunges or some uh, uh, squats or some assisted squats holding onto a bar and going down, this will build muscle mass, mass quickly. I want to give you an example. I, when I was underweight, ate pretty much just rice. My, I've got a mega miso meal in my program that you're familiar with if you're a client or you can um, uh, find out more about if you become a client. And just by eating rice every day and going to the gym and exercising, not just my legs and, and lower body, but also my upper body, and by um, having uh, about two or three glasses of orange juice a day, I put on about five kilos in under a month. I mean, huge amounts of muscle gain. You'd be satisfied with that at any stage of your um, bodybuilding career. I mean, it was, it was tremendous without taking protein powders, without taking, uh, eating high fat or high protein foods like nuts or seeds, um, anything like that. So it's totally doable, right? And so I think what we all think is a protein powder requirement is actually a calorie issue, getting enough energy and exercising to build muscles so that we don't add all this extra excess protein, which can add to our acidity in the body and also the other uh, molecular mimicry uh, issues that I talked about. Now, the final thing I want to cover down here is if you do want to go down this path, never get a dairy version, a whey protein powder. They're a disgusting, uh, uh, very highly, highly aggravating to cancer um, and allergenic uh, source of protein. This whey comes from, uh, you know, a cow milk derivative. So, uh, you know, you'd have to be, uh, you have to be on crack to want to take that stuff. Um, what I've been given in the past by people, uh, you know, I get products given to me and stuff. Um, this is a this is a plant-based one. After I've just told you that I don't think you should, but if I'm, some people just, are, you know, you can't teach them, right? So this is one that uh, I recommend if you're in the United States. I know that the Sun Warrior is a product in the states, also stocked here in Australia. Um, so that's a good option, right? So recommend that if. For instance, you're really weight training, your inflammation's under control, really low levels of inflammation, and you feel you can handle uh, some more protein, then fine, right? But if you're in the balance and you're really trying to uh, get your uh, pain levels to a minimum each day and it's being problematic and it's just not going very far, I, you know, this is not the stage that you're at. You need to be at the earlier stages of the Patterson program and working through uh, more of the baseline foods until you can tolerate um, more advanced uh, foods like protein powders. The other one, which is 
here in Australia. And again, I got given this, and you'll laugh because this is actually primal protein, right? And uh, you know that I think the, the paleo diet is, uh, is an atrocity to humanity. But um, this is a primal protein, so it was given to me as a gift. The, the, they, um, this is a vegan company, and they are servicing the paleo market, right? So even though they don't endorse uh, that way of eating either, um, there's a huge market there for people who, um, men who get, especially, who go to the gym and think that, um, you know, you need to be, um, you need to eat a lot of, uh, of, of um, you know, meat products to uh, enhance their physical training. Um, and no doubt, obviously, that, you know, you can really bulk up on animal foods, um, but is that healthy? Well, that's a completely different question, isn't it? So anyway, the, the, the point I want to make here is that Prana On is a fabulous, uh, very, very um, successful and clean source of protein in Australia, and they are broadening to the international market. And if you can source this and you're uh, basically committed and determined to have protein powders, then I recommend this above all else, but the Sun Warrior if you can't source Prana On. Okay, let me wrap this up. Um, first of all, thanks for watching this video. Uh, if you have some comments, let, uh, sorry, if you have some questions, let me know. Make a comment below this video. Um, and if you have um, any help of my uh, uh, that I might be able to help you with, I recommend our joining our forum. That's the best place to be if you'd like personal help from me. So until I see you or see you in the forum or create another video, all the best and happy healing. Lots of love.